Okay, let's look at some qualitative charge voltage characteristics of this MOS capacitor. So what should happen as we apply voltages? And we're not going to do the exact solution yet, but we will consider these regions here of accumulation, depletion, and inversion. Okay, so those three terms have to become rather familiar and you can begin to have sketches of band edge diagrams like this in your head when we talk about inversion, okay? And you should become familiar with that. And we'll carry out some charge calculations now. All right, so we had uh, um, considered um, uh, these three regions, accumulation, depletion, and inversion. And we're gonna consider the potential here of the, uh, um, of the, at the interface, okay? And we want to look at the charge that is sitting in the semiconductor. So again, we're going to a, a model where we integrate the whole charge, and we're going to plot it as a function of potential at this interface, okay? So, semiconductor charge. We're not going to bother with the, uh, the metal charge. Okay, again, what we use here is the uh, the action that happens here at the bands over here, and this is what we call the uh, semiconductor uh, psi s to be zero at the flat band condition. Okay. Now, if we are in accumulation, you can pile up majority carriers right at the interface really well. Okay. It's an exponential process. You need to just bend the bands just ever so small that you can pile up charges against the interface and the dielectric response is there and you fill the states. And it's an exponential rise as a function of the surface potential. Okay. Now, in depletion and inversion, it's slightly different. We will show later that in the region of depletion, it goes as the square root of the surface potential. And as it goes to inversion, it goes again similar to the same similar exponential that we had over here. Okay, so there are two different regions. Uh, one has to do that here we are just exposing the donors and um, have a square root uh, dependence on the surface potential. And then we have an exponential dependence. And we'll get into details where this comes from. And that's the motivation piece here. All right. So this is, again, the um, sketch of the bandage diagram close to um, inversion. And we'll, we'll explore a little bit here around that point. OK? So we want to solve the charge in the semiconductor. OK? Again, as a reminder, electro, uh, the potential here uh, is uh, dropping off linearly. The electric field is constant. Okay. So uh, we are applying a gate voltage, and we're applying it this way, where we're driving the system uh, either in depletion or even higher into inversion. Okay. We won't have current and we will just solve Poisson equation like this, okay? One thing to remember, the total voltage must be the gate voltage we apply, the oxide voltage that we drop, uh, uh, potential, sorry, the potential we apply on the uh, metal, uh, the oxide potential, and then the surface potential on the semiconductor. Those three need to be add, add up, okay? And we'll solve Poisson equation to get the detailed curvature of these bands. Okay, how do we do that? Well, we need to add up the charges, holes, electrons, donors, and acceptors, and uh, we have just one dielectric constant, and we solve for the um, potential along the x direction here, which we call x. Okay. All right, so we have this surface potential that we want to obtain. Once we have it, um, well, let me start from here. What does that mean to the electric field and what does it mean to the charge? 
Okay, so if we have this band bending in this form, we know we're going to have an electric field that decreases as a function of x towards uh, the bulk of the system. Okay, again, at the tail end of the device, the, f the fields must be zero, because the totally enclosed charge must be zero. But we're doing all this calculation now only on the semiconductor side. So that means that if we start from the right, we have zero free charge. At some point, we encounter the acceptor charge in this case, and that needs to be balanced by some other charge that sits here. Okay, so that's why the electric field coming from this direction rises up, or the electrostatic potential goes down. Okay? And this is very similar to all the calculations we've done to a PN junction. It's the same depleted charge region, but the mechanism on how we depleted it is different. But the calculation of charge, etc., is the same. And we'll do it again, the same thing. We start from charge, go integrate to electric field, and then to potential. Okay? All right, so let's do that. Again, we start from uh, the exposed acceptors that are negatively charged, and we have a depletion region. Okay? So, we've calculated this electric field again, right? We're integrating the charge uh, by Poisson equation, so that gets us an electric field at this point. Okay? And it's basically the same expression as what we had before for PN junctions. Nothing different. And then uh, we can calculate uh, what we used to call a built-in potential like this, or part of the built-in potential, by integrating up uh, the, pot uh, the electric field to get this surface potential. Okay? So, what is that potential? Well, it's half of this rectangle, right? So, one half of the electric field, which we plug in, times the width of this, that gets us if we multiply this out, the, the surface potential, okay? And it goes like, a, if you integrate that out, uh, like a square, right? All right, from that, we can now get the width of this um, depletion region, okay? Or relate the, the width of the depletion region to the surface potential and the accepted doping. All right, so we have these two expressions for uh, the width and the surface potential, and we're interested in uh, obtaining um, or relating the semiconductor charge as a function of the surface potential. Okay? Good. All right. Now, I had um, re uh, basically stated already that the uh, gate potential here that we're applying must be summing up to the oxide potential and the surface potential of the device, okay? So that's what we had, oxide potential is here. Now, what is the um, um, oxide potential? Oh, sorry, here's the, the gate potential. Oh, the oxide potential here is um, uh, what's the potential dropping off over the oxide? There is no free charge. We have already calculated the field here at this point in the half, uh, half um, domain. Okay, so that's basically the potential dropping off linearly over a distance x0. x0 is the oxide thickness. Okay, so that's our oxide potential. And here we go. That's our surface potential, right? We had already obtained that. Okay, now we're plugging in the value for the electric field from the previous slide and carry this down. And we're plugging in uh, the width. And we can see that if we plug in the width here, it goes as the square root of uh, psi s, the surface potential. We have the expression here that the gate voltage depends as a, a sum of um, the square root of the surface potential and linearly and as a function of the surface potential. Okay? No real magic here, just doing electrostatics. That means I can give this some coefficient, 
times the square root plus the surface potential. Okay. Um, if I know what my uh, gate is, I can now determine the, the surface potential. All right. So I have a recipe on how to compute that. And um, let's look in the depletion region here and understand this here. That goes as the square root. And then we have this other region um, uh, over here that we'll need to discuss in a minute. Okay, so you can solve for the surface potential given that you have a doping concentration and uh, you have um, oxide thickness and you can, so you can get the surface potential. All right, so let's go back um, to, to this expression. We had calculated before the total charge in this uh, semiconductor if we're in depletion region, right? So, and we're now wanting to relate that to the surface potential, which we have done here, okay? So we, all we did is we plugged in W, okay? From the previous slide. Okay, now, how do we get to this exponential? At um, uh, zero surface potential, we said there's zero charge, right? We're balanced between accumulation and depletion, so there's zero charge, and this is on a log scale. And if we're now going towards inversion, we're starting to want to put electrons up there, this will go as an exponential, as I mentioned, and we'll derive where this exponential comes from in the next few slides. On the other side, this also goes as an exponential. Okay. Yeah, well, this is pretty obvious comment on the bottom. Uh, why did we not see these phenomena um, of these uh, carriers accumulating like this? Because we didn't have, um, we, we were based on a PN junction where we had a depletion region on both sides. But we did see something similar in the, ox, uh, in the um, Schottky contacts, okay? All right, so let's have an intermediate summary. MOSFET is a dominant device now. Um, not because it has superior uh, device performance overall, but it because it, bec it consumes less power. And we haven't uh, uh, delved into the details of that. We'll do that in the next few slides. But we need to understand first on how is power consumed in these devices. And it's ultimately a 2D device, and we'll get to that in the next section as well. Here we've just sketched a 1D performance of a surface potential and how we have three regions of device performance. All right, so in the next section, we're gonna start calculating these depletion and inversion charges in some more detail. So I'll see you in that section.